Ah! Works every time. Hello! This video is sponsored by My Messy Room. Perhaps me living on my own was a mistake. That means I go untamed. I'm joking, I'm joking. I'm gonna clean this room eventually. Just give me like a few years. Okay, so I've been right back on it with the lessons I've been giving. Lesson after lesson after lesson after lesson after lesson after lesson after. People generally don't realize you can literally play anything. Literally anything. Well, how is that possible? Okay, well, I'm gonna show you. The key is setting a goal, but it's attainable. It's realistic. So basically every practice session, I try to accomplish something that I wasn't able to at the beginning of the practice session. Like I said, the goal has to be attainable. You can't make a goal that's just ridiculous. For example, a crazy 16th note line that you can only play cleanly at like 20 beats per minute. And you're hoping by the end of the practice session, you can play it at 200 beats per minute. That's not gonna happen in one practice session. But here's the thing, we tend to overestimate how much we can do in a day but we tend to underestimate how much we can do in a month. So with every practice session, if you can accomplish something little, even if it's a practice routine, say you can accomplish something within each part of your routine, then by the end of the month, you will have accumulated so much growth. Now, I know what you're thinking. Ah, set a small goal, right there. everyone says this. I understand that it can be different hearing someone tell you something and watching what someone tells you. So that's exactly what I'm gonna be doing in this video. I'm gonna to try to play something that I can't play quite yet, but it's attainable. And then I'm gonna show you the methods that I do in order to attain it. Now here's another thing you must realize. The stronger you are in your fundamentals and scales, the faster you learn anything. Which means the faster that you can sight read it, the faster that it makes sense to you, the faster you can go up in tempo, and the faster that it becomes ingrained into your playing. So in order to practice these fundamentals, there's a lot of books out there. But the problem with these books is that they're often not in the full range of the horn, nor are they in all 12 keys. But I wrote a book, and it took me a whole summer to write this book. It's about 140 pages, where I put all the fundamental scale patterns and exercises that you should know within a major scale. And I put them in all 12 keys and the full range of the horn. That way you don't practice an exercise in one key that only includes part of the horn's register. And then you're like, well, I can play it here, but I sure hope if I ever see this in a real piece of music, it doesn't go anywhere beyond this part of the register because I haven't practiced it. Okay, so a key that I hate right now on my saxophone is F sharp major. Who doesn't hate F sharp major? <laughs> Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is pull up the book on my laptop. When you download the book, it gives you an interactive PDF. So you can actually click a tab, and here it is, F sharp major. You click on it, and what do you know? You're on F sharp major. So I'm gonna find a workout that just seems like it sucks to me. Okay, broken fourths forwards. This will be a great example. All right, so first what I'm gonna do is play it at a comfortable tempo without a metronome. It's getting pretty late at night, so I'm subtoning all these low notes. I don't want to make my neighbors more mad than they need to be. They did say I can practice at any time of the day, but I don't think they realize how loud the saxophone can get. So I'm gonna practice all the low register notes in the subtone. Hope that's okay. Okay, that didn't feel too bad. So here's exactly what I do to make the most of this practice session. I find that tempo that I just did it. I try to find a rough estimate. So I pull up a metronome. Okay, so I did it about 63 beats per minute. Now, the first thing is set a goal. So remember, I said it needs to be attainable. So if I were to try to go up to 208, I genuinely don't think I could do that today. 
I have to be very honest with myself. Listen to my body, listen to where I'm ready right now. Let me try to find a tempo that I know I couldn't do it right now, but if I put in a bit of work, I can do it today by the end of this practice session. And it also depends how much am I willing to put into this right now. Am I willing to put in an hour in this workout or do I just wanna spend like 15 minutes? Right now, I'm feeling more about 15 minutes. So I'm not gonna shoot super high. There's no rush to get to a crazy fast tempo. 126. Let's see if I can do this. I know I can't. Okay, so just like I thought, I can't do it. But I know if I just put in 15 minutes with this method I'm going to show you, I can do it. So 126 is the goal. So the first part of the method is what I call the doubt clearing phase. This is where you practice really slow, slower than you know you can play it, as if everything is a long tone. But as I'm doing this, I'm thinking of but as I'm doing this, I'm thinking about everything. I'm thinking about the note I'm on. I'm thinking about the note after it. I'm thinking about the note I just played. What I'm doing is getting rid of all doubts. I am being concrete of what note is what. I'm deciding, okay, after this note, this note comes. After this note, this, this, this is sharp. This is sharp. This is a natural, everything. So I'm gonna do 50 beats per minute, but I'm gonna hold each note for four of these counts. Now this is gonna be very boring to watch, so I'm gonna show as part of it, and then I'm just gonna speed it up. But also understand there are some other things in mind. I'm also trying to play very relaxed, making sure my fingers aren't tits, and make sure every interval that I finger through is very clean. I don't want any of I want straight up. Boom, boom, point A, point B. All right, here we go. Welcome to Alltech Lansing. Ah. Now that step is initially not the most exciting step, but it's a necessary step. Now I have a stronger sense of exactly what notes are what. Maybe I should use the biz A sharp here, and then the side A sharp here, etc. So that's the doubt clearing phase. Now here's part two. Part two, I don't really use a metronome. I call this the long, short, long, short, long, short, long. So essentially, I'm gonna play the first note long, and I'm gonna play the next note really short, and I'm gonna play the next note really long. And now the longs can be as long as I want, and the short has to be as short as I can get it. What this does is it allows you to see two notes at a time as one movement. So now we're starting to work on compressing all this information into smaller, bite-sized, comprehensible bits of information. So this is also a pretty hybrid approach. This allows you to practice 50% of the passage fast and the other 50% slow. So let's go ahead and do that. Ah, messed up there. So here is a problem area I need to fix right now. Okay, feeling better on that. Okay, so I finished that. Now I'm going to invert it. I'm going to practice the other 50% fast and the other 50% slow. 
Now how we're gonna do that is instead of long, short long, short long, short long, short long, short long, short long, we're going to do short long, short long, short long, short long, short long. Okay, here we go. Ah, ugly one. So it looks like the B to the E sharp is gonna be a little problem area there. So let's go ahead and address it now before it screws us up later. Step three is now I'm gonna put this on a metronome. But here's the thing. I'm gonna put the metronome slightly faster than my goal tempo. And I'll explain to you in a second. So if the goal tempo was 126, yeah. So I'm gonna put on 132. Now this isn't too much different than step two. So I'm gonna go do badu 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 so it's essentially the same thing, but now the longs have to follow the metronome. Those longs are now pretty short. Now they're just dotted eighth notes. Mm, so I'm messing up here. Good, and as you can see, this is a pretty ugly process. I don't sound that good right now. But someone told me, if you're in a practice room and you sound great, then you're probably not practicing what you should be practicing. So I'm being pretty vulnerable and showing you guys all my ugly saxophone playing, but I will take the sacrifice if it means you feel less lonely when you're messing up in the practice room as well. Now with this exercise, the goal isn't necessarily to play the whole thing perfectly. I mean, this is faster than where we can take it, right? But what we're doing is we're, those 16th notes are faster, much faster than where our goal tempo that we set in the very beginning is. So as you can kind of see what's coming up here, I'm setting myself to making that goal tempo I had set to feel really easy. So let's go ahead and finish the step three. Now I'm gonna do short long, short long, short long. I'm gonna do the 16th note first and then the dotted eighth note. Mm, bad one. Okay, so the B to the E sharp is really giving me some problem here. So I'm just gonna spend a bit of time on that. Awesome. So what we did is we accomplished some stuff in a tempo that is just not my territory right now. I don't belong in 132 quite yet on this workout, but I went in there and I grabbed some things anyway. <clears throat> okay, so step four, I'm gonna stick to 132 beats per minute. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna play these as eighth notes and I'm gonna group these eighth notes in three notes at a time. So this will be a little confusing, but we're just gonna play one, two, three, make that three as long as you need to, and then whenever you're ready, go ahead and play the next three notes. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. But make sure you have this metronome on just to keep you on the eighth note rhythm. One, two, three. One, two, three. So this is helping us compress the information even more. So now we're seeing three notes at a time as one movement. Oh, 
Okay, so I connected all these in three notes at a time, but there are other groups of notes that I haven't played in three groups. Cause I did one, two, three, eight, one. But what about those three and the one that I just stopped at? We need to combine those together. So let's go ahead and do that. The way that you do that is you do this one, two, three pattern again, but you start on the second note this time. And this way you're gonna have a new mix of one, two, three, one, two, threes. So here we go. <laughs> Okay, and there's actually one more set that we haven't practiced of the three note set, and that's when we start on the third note and do this. So, so it's gonna be one, two, and then one, two, three, one, two, three. One, two, three. <laughs> Okay, awesome. Very, very good stuff, wow. Okay, and remember, like I said, this is not a very beautiful process. I'm sounding pretty bad. That's just part of it. That's part of what it is to practice. Okay, and now the last method here is doing the same thing, but instead of three note patterns, you're gonna do four note patterns. So exact same thing, same tempo, but just one, two, three, four. Oh, 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 they, they fall. Okay, but that being said, that means we have to do all the one, two, three, fours for each four groups. So you're gonna have a one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and then after you finish that, you're gonna have to go one, and then one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and then after you finish that, you're gonna have to go one, two, and then one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and then after that, you're gonna go one, two, three, and then. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So I'm starting to run out of time here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do this part and fast forward. <laughs> So, I finally did it. I finished all the steps. Now watch this. This happens to all my students and it happens to me even to this day. I'm gonna go back to the goal tempo because I've been practicing in a faster territory. So, when we're asking ourselves to go even slower, we're asking ourselves to make this even easier when this goal tempo was actually hard. It's like we just tricked ourselves. Okay, so that's exactly what I'm gonna do. I'm going to go to 126, and I'm just gonna play it all across, and I bet you I can do it. I bet you I can do it on the first try. Okay, here I go, moment of truth. <laughs> Ah. And there you have it, folks. Works every time. So you set a small attainable goal and then you reach it and then you keep doing this every day and then your progress will accumulate and then pretty soon you'll be the ultimate master of all. So you can see how I'm breathing through that. I'm not out of air. Now, once you get that down, give yourself about 10 years to learn that part. Okay, well, I hope this video helped and I hope yeah, I hope for a lot of things. And by the way, thank you for 53,000 subscribers. Oh my God. Oh, wow. Wow. Okay, well, have a good day.